for those who just joined or watching us, um, yeah, by the stream, uh, I will I will just do a, a quick bio description for those who are visually impaired. I'm a white man, bald with beard, wearing a, a, a blazer, and we are in a seminar room full of nice people. And today we'll talk about uh, the commonly used free software licenses. If you had the opportunity to check my previous uh, talk, I talk what is a license. And the, the, the takeaway from that presentation is that a license is an authorization. License is what grants other people rights to reuse or to interact with a copyrighted work. And with this presentation, I would like to introduce you to the commonly used free software licenses. I will name uh, some license and perhaps it's not the most loved one by you and perhaps, you, you, please don't be offended and say, oh, you didn't mention my, my license. There's a lot of free software license out there in the wild. That's why I just said the, only, the commonly used, okay? But if you wanted to, to introduce uh, me to your very nice license uh, full of uh, free software features there, uh, please, um, we can uh, talk about that in a coffee. I'll be around until tomorrow. Right, so um, we'll talk uh, and we do a, a quick recap about software license models, the type of free software licenses, and I will explain you what are non-reciprocal licenses, also called permissive licenses, and reciprocal licenses that are also very known as copyleft, okay? So basically, um, from, uh, we went already today on this, but I would like to, to repeat myself because this is important for, for this talk. Uh, when we are talking about license models, we have basically two. We have the, the proprietary one, which the main purpose is limit ways to assess, uh, assess and control source code. And, um, and we have the free, yes, free and open source with main purpose is free software freedom. And there we can uh, have a classification on reciprocal license, also called copyleft, and non-reciprocal license called uh, permissive. And please bear in mind that when you choose uh, the term type of license, uh, um, depending, for example, if it's a reciprocal or uh, non-reciprocal, or if you, uh, you decide to go full proprietary, which um, here uh, we don't suggest, but anyway, um, it will affect it, uh, directly uh, how the development of your software will be impacted and you know and also some software business models okay so um, when in, what uh, is a free software license basically from the legal perspective we can understand that from policy perspective from moral perspective or even some philosophical perspective but today since we are in a legal track i would like to uh, point out some um conceptions that are important for uh, legal determination for you know uh, recognize when we say okay this is uh, a free software license and basically um, there are two organizations that are curators of uh, the term uh, free software what we can understand about uh, free software and another organization that is the creator of the term open source the one is the free software foundation um, not Europe, is the, based on US, uh, and we are a sister organization. And the another one is the open source initiative, okay? And basically, uh, the, the, the definitions that each one of those organizations come up with, there is a, a very rich historical development. But when we talk about uh, legal aspects, I would consider the definition, you know, proposed by the Free Software Foundation and the definition proposed by the Open Source Initiative as synonyms, okay? And basically, I will stick uh, with what, what the uh, Free Software Foundation uh, has come with. Basically, when we are talking about free software, and when we are talking about licenses that can be considered a free software license, are that license that, you know, provides basically to downstream users four types of uh, freedoms. All right, the freedom to run the software for any purpose, to study the source code, and for that, it's really important to have access uh, to source code. We have the freedom of redistribution, redistribution of copies, and the less freedom is improvement of the software and redistribution of derivative works, okay? Um, yeah, the, the definition proposed by the OSI, uh, although it's more verbose, basically it conveys uh, um, the same idea. 
Okay, and uh, I and which kind of classifications can we talk about when we, now we are not talking more in the division about free software license and proprietary license. Now we are talking just about free software license. What kind of free software life, license can exist? And basically, we have two types. We have reciprocal and non-reciprocal. And what are the principles that guide uh, this main differentiation? When we are talking about reciprocal licenses, the main principle is if you distribute the software that you received, so someone is the copyright holder, is, has published um, her uh, software under a reciprocal license, a copyright license, and now you are interacting with the software. You received the software, so yes, you can run you, the software for any purpose, you can use it, but now let's think that you wanted to redistribute the software, right? So if you distribute it, you must use the same license terms, right? And if you distribute the software, you must provide source code. So this is the principles of copyleft, this principle of reciprocal licenses. And when we are talk about no reciprocal license, uh, usually also people call it permissive license, but I like the term non-reciprocal. The main principle is if you, read, you distribute uh, uh, the software code, uh, so basically you are receiving a, a, a software that is under a non-reciprocal license, if you redistribute it, you must provide license notice. And I will show you in a minute what a license notice is. Well, examples of reciprocal license, we have uh, uh, several of them. And the, the most loved one, the GPL, the GNU uh, public license. And we also have, for an example, the Mozilla public license. And since we are here in Europe, we have a license for public, for public sector called European uh, Union public license. But when we are talking about non-reciprocal licenses, uh, we have, for an example, the MIT license, BSD, and the Apache 2 license, okay? Um, uh, so let's start learning a little bit uh, about the non-reciprocal license because the type of obligations that they convey there is a little bit more simple. So, okay, so this is uh, the MIT license. So nice to meet you. Uh, if you don't know MIT license, yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, and basically this is a very simple license. This is the entire text of license. So, um, and well, when we take the GNU public license, it's a little bit different, you know, and, uh, and, and when we go to proprietary license, sometimes our contracts with, you know, uh, with, yeah, full of paper there. But the MIT license is very simple, and basically, uh, here we have the copyright grants. So, permission is hereby granted free of charge to any person, you know, and all these legalese. But what I would like to, to point out is the license notice. So the notice obligation. Remember when I was telling that uh, if you distribute, you must provide a license notice. So here is the, the notice obligation. The above copyright notice and this permission notice shall be included in all copies of substantial portion of the software. Okay, so uh, this is the, the type of obligation that you have under a uh, uh, um, non-reciprocal license. But when we are talking about copyleft license, and that's the, this board is uh, too small for me to, to put in the, the entire code, uh, the entire text of the license there, uh, I just wanted to, to, put, to, to point out to the rules and obligations of um, copyleft license. So, and here, uh, what are the first rules? Remember, uh, what, what, when I mean by distribution, uh, redistribution, so imagine that you are a user of your company and or you are another developer and you are you take, uh, receiving, you are downloading cop copy left uh, code, you know, and then you start using just for your personal use. So you don't need to do anything, you can just use, all right? But the, the license obligations, the license terms will start to apply when you redistribute this uh, code. So on commercial or non-commercial um, uh, uh, objectives, uh, doesn't matter. So once you upload your, your work, part with this copyleft work, you need to abide the license obligations. And the obligation is, if you distribute your code only in binary form, you know, and we are not talking about source code. For example, you compile your code and now you are distributing it, you must make the corresponding source, a code, a source code available. So there is no way out, uh, no pain, no gain. So you, if you wanted to convey that, you needed to provide access to source code, okay? 
But if you are distributing your code already in the source code form, well, congratulations, your job is done, okay? And, but there is another type of obligations when you consider about a copyleft license. And basically is the principle called inbound equals outbound. So uh, when you receive a, a copyleft, uh, a software that is protected by a copyleft license, you need to keep the same license terms. You must relicense the software you received on the same copyleft terms. So if GPL is entering, GPL is going out. If Mozilla Public License is, is going, you need to, to keep the, the, the same license terms, okay? Right, and perhaps you want to say, okay, but this is a little bit complex. Uh, how I choose uh, 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 a license for my software uh, project? Well, there are some you know, ways in order to, for you to choose your license, and we have even a portal called Choose a License. Um, we always recommend the GPL, the GNU Public License, because, well, it's a consolidated license. It's a license that has a, a story, has a reputation, and you know, it's copyleft license. So so it, uh, the, the main objective of the license is to safeguard software freedom, right? But usually you need, you, you, there is some, oh, yeah, you know, uh, depending on objectives, there are other types of license that uh, perhaps it's useful for you, okay? So um, I just wanted to, to show, uh, again, uh, don't be offended if your license is not there, uh, but, but basically these are the most common, you know, uh, uh, free software license. Uh, so we have... Uh, the GPL, that also is considered one um, license that are considered strong copyleft license. We have the uh, AGPL for network copyleft. We have the LGPL that's for libraries called also weak copyleft and Mozilla public license. And also when we are talking about non-reciprocal, we have the MIT, the Apache, and other types of licenses. Um, all information about licenses easily find, uh, yeah, findable you know, in, in the internet. You can read more about this type of license. And if you are searching for a license, um, yeah, you can, you can certainly find information on how a license can suit for your project. In this note, I, I, I finished my presentation, and once again, I thank you very much for your attention.